OK, are we good to go? All right, welcome. Thanks for uh, coming over. Um, so this is Chris. I'm Dirk. We're going to talk about um, the next step of OpenStack evolution for NFV deployments. So what we want you to take away from this talk is not so much like a detailed list of uh, NFV techo requirements uh, to OpenStack, but a bit more of like an understanding, um, say, how the development process um, is changing. So in the NFV telco environment, um, so how we are currently moving on, um, like uh, transitioning our um, systems to uh, like a fully cloud-based approach, uh, so leveraging all the uh, different uh, open source components. Um, so I'm a chief researcher at uh, NEC Labs uh, in, in Germany. Um, so mainly working on like yeah, networking in general, in particular on SDN. And what interests me uh, at the moment is, so how can we um, transform the current systems, uh, so leveraging uh, NFV and SDN, so how we can, we can uh, design better mobile networks uh, in particular. Um, so doing some work in uh, the IRTF and um, yeah, also involved in OPNFV. I'm Chris Wright. I, I'm the chief technologist at Red Hat, and I've been working in open source for quite some time. My background is coming from uh, Linux, being a Linux kernel developer, and hypervisors, virtualization, the networking side of, of the I.O. path for, for uh, hypervisors is what sort of brought me to where we are now, which is talking about how do we transform the industry? How do we move the telcos networks from the traditional uh, model that we see today to uh, a cloud-based model that we're, that we're building together right now? OK. Um, so just a quick uh, overview of, of what uh, so NEC uh, is doing uh, in that space. So NEC is an um, IT and communications uh, company in, in Japan, obviously. So we are doing uh, uh, cloud infrastructure uh, and telecom networks uh, and services. Um, so we are, have been like involved in uh, uh, like UMTS, where we had the first uh, UMTS deployment, the first LTE deployment. Um, um, had an early VPC system, um, and in general, we have been working with like Linux-based and open source-based um, platforms for, for quite some time. So you, you see on the, that, that diagram uh, basically um, our VEPC um, system. Um, so I'll tell you um, a bit more on that uh, in a second. Um, we were like founding men uh, members of uh, ONF, uh, Open Daylight, uh, OpenFV, and um, are involved in, in like a, a range of. Uh, like open source projects and uh, relevant standards uh, activities uh, in this space. And um, so our, our, our platform uh, today uh, is uh, like, uh, yeah, we, 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 are, we have chosen uh, Red Hat's uh, Enterprise Linux for our uh, NFVI um, systems that um, that we, we run on, on COD servers, um, like using different uh, network interfaces uh, um, uh, today, um, using Open vSwitch and DPDK. Um, we also have chosen uh, Red Enterprise Linux uh, OpenStack platform uh, for, for our VIM. And uh, so NEC has, like, has had a product like for orchestration management um, and, of course, our different um, uh, NFV applications, so the, the system, we were working with different third-party uh, vendors uh, like for building, um, say, complete systems for, for customers. And um, so I'm, I'm not sure how much you are aware of um, so how like the telco industry uh, has been evolved in, in recent uh, years. So for, for NEC, um, so like our, say, previous product range, um, as far like ma uh, many other vendors in that space, was like based on the so-called um, advanced uh, telecommunications architecture systems. So like these were the like five nines, highly reliable, redundant systems. So big boxes um, with all the monitoring management uh, features. Um, so we uh, have chosen Linux from uh, like quite an early time. Uh, so we're building those systems. And from those, we uh, derived like the first generation of, of um, virtualized um, systems. Uh, so was at that time, our uh, in-house developed uh, resource management for, for orchestration. And um, so now, as I uh, told you uh, um, earlier, we are moving this uh, to like an open 
uh, source platform, um, say, generalizing the system, um, try to figure out so what of the specific proprietary uh, developments we had done actually make sense uh, in like upstream projects and then how we can be like successfully contribute them. And oops, I'm sorry, I almost went too far. Um, so um, we are currently um, uh, working in, in OPNFV, which was like the whole industry basically, um, to yeah, figure out what are uh, requirements that cover the whole range of uh, the open source uh, projects and, and, uh, and, and systems. And um, so how we can, uh, as an industry at large, uh, like do a uh, useful contribution uh, to those. Um, did I want to talk with this or no? I'll do that one. <laughs> so I have to ask you a question. Uh, ATCA, the A, the first A is advanced. And I, I imagine that's because it was Linux based. Uh, <laughs> um, well, for, for the NEC case, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, the interesting thing to note there is open source already has a history in this environment. So we're just expanding the footprint of, of the work we've been building on for, for many, many years. It's, it's uh, probably over at this point a, a decade ago when the Linux industry was focused on bringing Linux into the, the telco environment. So we're just expanding on that. And if you look at this, you know, Dirk mentioned the OPNFE project. You probably had a chance to hear about that. Is there anybody here not familiar with OPNFE? <laughs> All right, well, it's, I guess we're ready for beers then. <laughs> um, the, the OPNFE project, I think the purpose of this project is, an, is across a number of dimensions. But one of the things that's important to notice here, we're at the OpenStack Summit. We spend a lot of time talking about OpenStack and telco. But the OpenStack portion uh, or, or orchestration component of, of this overall software stack is just one piece. If you look at all of the projects up here that build up um, the NFBI or, or the virtualization infrastructure. The, the VIM layer, the management layer, is one piece, but there's, there's critical components underneath. So what happens when you want to make a change to the platform that spans all of these projects? Uh, OPNFE is there to help bring together all these different building blocks, uh, organize the, the, the development efforts across these different building blocks, and potentially uh, you know, bring them together, do integration testing, show that we're actually building something that works for the telco environment and sort of iterate and, and continue on that process. Um, what you see here is a bunch of, of projects. Most of them you already know from an OpenStack context. Uh, but again, there's, there's a significant amount of work that happens below the OpenStack layer. See if I can get this to go the right direction. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this is just an uh, obligatory slide about Red Hat and what we're doing and, and why we care about open source. And, and upstream and the leadership that we bring there. Uh, we have a, a long history of being an open source company. Uh, it, what's important for us is working together with both the development community and the user community to bring features into the software projects that we take from an upstream and then deliver as, as productized versions of those upstream projects. What, what, what that means is we're developing relationships on both sides. And it's really important to understand that if you are only in the developer community or you're only on the user side, you're, you're not getting the full picture. And we, our, our goal is to help the whole industry move forward and build these platforms in a way that they're re reusable across the industry. Because one of the dangers that we see is as you build from an, up, an upstream project point of view, as you build features on top of that and don't contribute them back to the upstream pro project, uh, you've created something that's both a fork and a, a long-term maintenance burden for you as a vendor. And uh, a, 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 it's a piece of technology that's tying you to your customer to you in a way that that customer isn't necessarily looking for. Um, a part of that is working together with our partners. So this is why we're here today. NEC and Red Hat saying these are all the cool things that we're doing together to make any NFV real. And so you'll see some of the specific work activities that we've done in the upstream uh, to enable NFV as a platform. The last piece there is talking about the robustness, stability, quality of the, of the software that comes out of these open source projects and delivered as products. Uh, you know, you're talking about platforms that are already running significant infrastructure, uh, trading platforms, uh, air, air control traffic platforms, uh, you know, well, 
I was gonna say train systems, but it's kind of awkward timing, but um, train systems as well. So there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, effort going into building these as enterprise quality platforms that are critical to the telco environment as well. So this is just a simple view of how we take those, those individual projects and turn those into um, product components. Uh, you see Neutron and Nova on the left side from the OPNFE picture. Translate that over to what we call RHEL OSP, so that's Red Hat Enterprise Linux OpenStack platform. Um, in that upper box, you see compute network storage. Those are the obvious key components of a, of a cloud. And the management piece uh, really is the, 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 what allows you to deploy and, and continue to monitor, maintain, and, and upgrade your infrastructure. Underneath that are these other key components. We're all familiar with, with um, KVM and the, its user space component, QMU, the application uh, library on top of that, that that allows you to program it, gives, gives it a programming interface as libvirt. And we've had to make a lot of modifications in the KVM and libvirt layers as we're, we're trying to expose features out through, through OpenStack. Um, at the bottom, you see uh, an, an SDN controller and, and Ceph or, or potentially Gluster as a storage technology. And there at the bottom, in the sense that these Across all of the compute nodes in a data center. Uh, for us, the SDN controller is either something available through partners, through a third party, or uh, we're working heavily on the Open Daylight project and, and hope to bring that into part of our product portfolio in the near future. On the right hand side, you see something called Cloud Forms. Uh, there's an upstream project called Manage IQ, and this is an orchestration. Uh, framework, really, it's a tool that allows you to manage the, your infrastructure. Uh, it, it has a, a, a history that starts with uh, doing uh, kind of taking events from your infrastructure and then responding to those events and changing how you're doing resource allocation and giving you um, kind of a, a catalog of resources. That type of activity is similar to what you see in a, in a uh, management orchestration layer in the, in the Etsy NFE reference architecture. So if you look at what we're doing in OPNFE, we talked about some of those specific pieces. Uh, we talked about OPNFE being a, a mechanism for tying those pieces together. Uh, on the left-hand side, that's just the platform. And in OPNFE, one of the things that we're trying to build is testing infrastructure. So we want to take all these pieces. We're modifying them upstream. We're bringing them back into OPNFE. What do we do with those? We have a project called Pharos, which, which is geared towards building actual physical lab infrastructure so that we can run this environment and actually run, uh, like, use, use a traffic generator and run uh, telco-type workloads on top of this platform to validate that it's actually doing what, we're set, what that we've set out to enable it to do. Um, some of the components that build up the, the OPNFE project that help us get to that point, on the, left, on, you know, the right-hand side of the green stuff, the far left box is the build, continuous build and integration. So we need a CI system. We need to be able to bring these pieces together, assemble them, and then launch them into a testing uh, uh, phase. And so you see uh, code names internally to the OPNFE project of projects that we have focused on deployment, the integration step, and the testing step. And finally, what's really going to be important going forward. So this is just foundational building blocks. How do we make this whole system work? validate, test, iterate, like we want to make sure we, we have a stable platform that we're starting from. What we're really trying to do is bring it forward. And on the right-hand side, you see the, the requirements projects. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of those requirements projects later. But in those requirements, we're looking at what are the functional gaps in the, in the um, OpenStack, Linux, KVM combination that we're using to build a uh, network virtualization infrastructure layer. And then how do we take those functional gaps and turn those into development efforts and actually s solve the problems that we're trying to solve for the telco use case? OK. Um, so um, looking a bit, um, so what is actually the, say, the motivation for like, the industry to, to um, really invest so much money into, uh, into NFV? Um, so for me, it's, it's really um, three things. Um, so, um, so automation really being the most important one. So being able to uh, deploy s systems at large scale in a fully automated fashion, uh, have the full lifecycle management automated, uh, um, elasticity um, of systems. And then 
Uh, as a result, um, we have all these benefits from flexibility. So uh, if you want to like, um, like roll out new services, that's all um, what's going to happen in 5G networks, right? So um, like reducing the uh, deployment times from like uh, right, days as today uh, and to seconds. So adding new services, removing new services uh, without having to actually change uh, anything with the physical infrastructure. That's a, a key benefit. Um, and then maybe, actually, maybe a bit less important is, is the whole cost efficiency uh, through consolidation uh, benefits. Also important, um, also important to uh, like have good performance and so on. Um, but the, the first two are, are, are really um, uh, the, the key drivers uh, for NFV at this point. But specifically, so when like we talk to our customers, uh, for example. Um, so we um, get a list of um, actually con concrete requirements. So like um, availability in the virtualized networks, fault management um, for that. So remember like five nines ATCA systems. Um, so in, in, in the cloud, th th these things are all a bit different. Um, so um, the, our mission is to provide the same level of availability uh, uh, with a more flexible approach. So faults can happen. It's, you kind of have to be able to detect them and react accordingly. Um, performance, so you want to virtualize, but you also really want to um, like take advantage of like the hardware ca capabilities. And, and uh, like especially um, in like um, certain, f for certain telco functions, it's really important to squeeze the last bit of performance uh, uh, out of the, on, on the functions. And then, so um, like building larger systems uh, like requires new forms of, of orchestration um, that like across data center across domains. That's also an important requirement um, we are getting. And um, so for the rest of, of this talk, um, so we're going um, through a, like two selected um, uh, work items that um, so the industry at large, uh, what Red Hat and NAC in particular, um, have been working on. Um, so this is our like, complete list. Um, so detecting uh, and notifying about hardware failures, that's what I just mentioned. So you need to be able to really know what's going on uh, um, in the infrastructure uh, to be, be able to react uh, correctly. Um, collecting information and configuring VM allocation, this whole like, CPU pinning UMA topic. I mentioned orchestration already. Um, so open stack availability, so the availability of the Vim itself uh, is important. Um, like physical server scale out, uh, live system upgrade, so without, without like uh, minimizing the, the, the overall system uh, availability. Um, like more advanced uh, VM connectivity also has been discussed today in, in some talks. Um, and then better ways to, to control uh, virtual machines. So today we are focusing uh, on, on the first two. So we'll say a little bit, um, so what's the motivation behind, um, so what's, what are approaches and what's happening in the uh, open source community. Um, so as I mentioned before, so of course we know um, uh, inf um, failures can always happen. So everything uh, kind of uh, has a limited uh, lifetime or it has, uh, kind of problems. So the question is more um, how to really avoid uh, impact on like critical service availability. So like, of course, that, that's a, like, a general requirement for all kinds of networks, enterprise um, uh, and telco. Uh, but in the telco environment, uh, well, this uh, not being able to achieve this uh, can really have uh, dramatic uh, consequences. So that's a, a real important uh, thing. ATCA solved that by like, yeah, investing heavily in standby uh, systems, uh, intensive monitoring of all the functions, all the blades uh, uh, in the rack, um, like um, specific ma uh, monitoring blades per box, and also a tight integration um, of the ATCA system into a network operator's management system. So there was always a very like detailed uh, and deep view um, from the management system into what's going on um, on those boxes. And um, well, obviously in, in the cloud, uh, this ha uh, has to, uh, done, to be done differently. Um, so we have to think about how to, what is the right weight and, and the right level of uh, uh, te um, telemetry and uh, a reaction approach. 
So without really losing the, all the benefits of virtualizations, without losing the ability to move systems around, to scale out, and, and so on. And so like, like in the ATCA world, I mean, there were like whole taxonomies of what can go wrong and uh, so how this information can, can be used to also predict, uh, say, more um, dramatic failures at some point. So like physical machine failure, uh, the chassis can have problems, um, storage can all have all kinds of problems, um, the network um, can have, have different problems. Um, so there was, uh, was quite some effort in really analyzing this very, very deeply. And um, well, telecom operators today, I mean, st still um, have like the uh, desire to, to um, like be very well informed what's going on uh, on their system. Maybe not to that very detailed level, but um, still that, that's an important requirement to at least be able to know that for some, um, certain functions. Um, so in the NFV uh, world, so, um, um, so in NEC we are, we are we're seeing th um, three different approaches uh, at the moment. So there's like the like first approach basically um, uh, is like reporting um, like hardware failures um, through the hypervisor to the VM and from there to the say element management system uh, and then some, some higher layer orchestration system. So this would basically mean um, like the VM and potentially uh, the BNF application itself um, that would be aware of uh, what's, what's going on. So you can see this a little bit um, as a mechanism that f um, systems that were ported directly from like previous platforms uh, would use where you kind of want to integrate or still want to maintain the integration in the uh, management system. Um, so that's still something uh, you have to be able to do uh, today. Um, option two. That would be, um, say, the more cloud-ready approach. So basically, um, yeah, try to um, escalate problems um, through the VIM and then um, have ways to like um, for like automated uh, reaction and then uh, some um, say escalation decision and at what point you need to like inform higher layers uh, uh, to react accordingly. And um, okay, so there are also of course um, like existing um, like. Uh, systems that uh, uh, can also do certain monitoring functions uh, in, in these cases. Um, but it's, I think, inter interesting to like, compare the first uh, two. So for the f like option one, um, say one, one question is how to actually re report um, like problems from the hypervisor to VMs. So you have to think about how to like, relay um, error notifications, um, so how to emulate uh, this, essentially. Um, and so what, what functionality you would uh, have to add um, to um, the guest OS to be able to deal with this information. Um, for option two, um, um, so if you are like, um, working with OpenStack, um, you, you probably know that like there's Xenometer, for example, um, um, for um, um, monitoring um, and storing uh, events. And uh, well, there would be the, like the cloud ap approach to um, use a general uh, orchestration system uh, to react to failures. Um, so looking at what has been done uh, in this space, especially for like option two, which is like, I think the um, desirable um, midterm, long-term uh, approach, um, actually quite, s quite some work by the community has been done so far um, addressing like uh, centimeter performance um, uh, topics. So, um, say how to uh, deal better, um, like with like high amounts of, of, of uh, like measurement data. Um, so, like time to live uh, uh, extensions um, to centimeter. Um, there has been like new work started uh, on uh, Gnocchi, so the uh, time series database um, that's currently going on. Um, so that, that's, that's good. So that's, um, of course, uh, that's the whole industry working on, on that. Um, so companies uh, like operators, vendors pro providing requirements, uh, developers, Red Hat, uh, but uh, also other companies uh, like addressing those, those issues. Um, that's having a very good step. Um, it's also good to see that uh, OPNFE uh, and its doctoral project 
um, like identifying further requirements and are working on uh, further implementation plans. Um, so uh, more on that later. Um, if you're interested in the topic in general, so uh, um, Russell Bryan ha had a nice blog post on uh, uh, availability uh, topics for OpenStack, so that's, I recommend you to um, check this out. Um, so, um, so this is a, a, a nice example. So um, how the industry is trying to uh, address these really um, um, strict requirements uh, from like operator customers and uh, to um, arrive at a reliable but still flexible uh, cloud-based solution. Um, so the the next uh, topic. Um, so we call that collecting information and configuring VM allocation. Um, so if you like think about, let's take this example here from, from our uh, VEPC um, system running in a virtualized environment. So we have different functions, so in different um, VNFs. Um, some of them like, um, are like uh, dealing with like signaling uh, uh, communication. Others are really forwarding, say, user plane traffic. For some of them, it makes sense to co-locate them uh, onto one box and to really optimize um, the intercommunication between them. And um, so you can, can see uh, if, if you were like, like dealing with a user plane uh, gateway, you really don't want to um, like, um, lose any performance by uh, say, um, having to move um, like the, the, the application from one, one uh, processor to the other. You really want to be sure that you have an optimal memory allocation uh, in these cases. So all these um, yeah, NUMA CPU pinning uh, topics, um, there's, a, there's a real justification behind this. So, um, so of course, that's not, all, not only in telco networks. We also know that so other kinds of networks have similar requirements. Um, but um, so like having these really say hard performance requirements, um, so vendors, um, so be before we kind of had all the open source solutions um, started to develop their own approaches to how to really implement that, so also including us. And yeah, the way to do it is um, basically uh, you have to actually be aware of uh, what your infrastructure provides, so how the architecture of your compute node looks like and so on. Um, to be able to uh, make like good decisions on um, so where to uh, what what uh, how to allocate uh, compute platforms and so on, um, you have to be able to express certain requirements for VNFs for VMs and then do the allocation and yeah do things like CPU pinning and and the uh, RAM allocation and um, yeah so what um, say our the previous range of uh, products uh, it did was um, yeah to to have a, a concept of um, um, ex uh, ex expressing uh, requirements for VMs. Um, um, yeah, um, see in the next page. So basically, some kind of uh, like flavor approach, as, as we call it today. So being able to set uh, like the resource control level for different types of uh, VMs. So for example, for, for like some VMs, it's, it's really important to do CPU pinning, um, disabling, um, crossing newer nodes, and um, disabling sharing uh, the physical core. And um, so here you see this um, you know, example here. Um, so assume you, you have like this say critical uh, VM2, this which is um, like initially configured so it was like level one or, or three. So that basically means um, we, we don't turn, or we, we don't disable uh, Numa node crossing. And if you turn this on, um, of course, you, you make sure that, um, well, the, the whole VM uh, like stays on, on one Numa node. And um, like similar here, um, you would, um, you would turn on, uh, or you, you would disable sharing physical uh, um, cores, and then, but by that, making sure that this critical function uh, really uh, does not share um, the, the core with any other application. So that, that's, I mean, state of the art uh, in, in um, virtualization uh, today. Um, so what we are doing is basically um, yeah, trying to transfer the way that our 
orchestrator used to work, uh, like to, to OpenStack and uh, um, trying to generalize uh, the approach a little bit so that it makes sense not only for the tech uh, environment, but also for other types of deployments. And so also there, I mean, there has quite some, some work uh, has been going on or has already uh, pa partially completed. So um, the, the word driver uh, guest vCPU topology configuration uh, is, uh, was part of Juno. Um, the uh, Newman node placement uh, is, in, is part of Kilo. And um, word uh, driver uh, uh, pinning guest vCPUs uh, to host uh, pCPUs. Um, the uh, the large page allocation for for guest uh, memory, and uh, also the um, uh, PCI based NUMA scheduling. So this is all work uh, where like companies like Red Hat uh, have invested um, significant development resources, where the whole industry provided requirements and and contributed development resources. Um, so it's quite a lot has been has been going on, and um, that's that's quite a quite an achievement, um, I have to say. I just want to add one thing to that. Yeah. You, you mentioned something that's important, which is the, ex the, the initial attempt to do this um, that, that NEC had worked on and a number of other folks in the industry was uh, often unique to, to their view of the world. And so when these, are, these requirements were surfacing uh, from, uh, from the teleco world to the OpenStack world, it looked really foreign to OpenStack people. And one of the concerns was you're, you're proposing an interface that says, let me take uh, this virtual machine and stick it on that machine right there on those CPUs with those uh, banks of memory. And the cloud side of the house is saying, you're out of your mind. That's absolutely crazy. Uh, it breaks the abstraction that we're trying to build with the cloud. And through this sort of back and forth, what is the real problem statement that you're, that you're trying to solve, not the solution that you're coming with? You know, we converged on on this set of blueprints and, and code merge that allows us to get the same level of packet processing efficiency without breaking the cloud model. And in fact, to a certain degree, as as Dirk mentioned, this is useful in other um, for other use cases. And you see in Amazon, for example, you can get an HPC instance. Uh, can you could probably guess what's under the hood of that HPC instance? Hmm. Right, and so looking a bit into the future, so we mentioned um, the OPNFV Doctor project um, before. Um, so this is um, like one of the projects in, in uh, OPNFV that is like initially developing requirements. So um, so what is what do we still need uh, for fault management? Um, what is not, not yet there, and then thinking about okay, how can we um, like implement this or design this um, so in the, in the right way and contribute this to upstream uh, projects. Um, so I'm not sure how much you had uh, heard about uh, OpenFE Doctor um, so far, but um, so we have just released uh, say our first public um, document, so describing the, the whole idea and uh, the concrete requirements and uh, also some implementation um, ideas. Um, so check it out on the OpenFV website. Um, so there, there are two use cases um, that um, we have described. So one is like the um, like fault management uh, use case. So if assuming we have like a, a hardware failure on a like physical machine in our infrastructure, um, so what would be um, the best way to like analyze this in the in the room? Um, and how do we decide, um, say, how to escalate this um, to higher layer orchestration systems? So, for example, figuring out um, so what VMs were actually running on, on that uh, box and so who kind of owned them. And so what is the, the, the right, say, way of informing uh, higher layers? Um, for example, enabling um, so an, an active standby um, reaction, so standby um, reaction. Um, so that's one thing. Um, the other thing is like the, the kind of uh, a maintenance uh, use case. So I mean, even in the cloud, we kind of have to change disks or uh, upgrade systems at some point. And so there, the um, idea is that um, so a like cloud data center operator at some point decides, okay, I, I want to do this maintenance on this box, and then also again figure out. 
So in the same way, like um, map this physical machine to um, like affected virtual machines, and then and notify um, high layer orchestration. Um, so the like document I mentioned uh, describes this uh, in, in more detail, and then also uh, derives a, a kind of concrete list of requirements for that. And so there have been two blueprints coming out of that work um, uh, so far. So um, so one on uh, on um, Celometer and um, one on Nova. Um, so um, the notification alarm uh, evaluator for Celometer and um, so extensions to uh, or a, a new, a new Nova API. Um, so I think they have been discussed this, this this week, and so far we have gotten quite positive uh, feedback. Um, so that's um, I think for open NFE uh, quite quite good results. So in, in like this. Um, this startup phase of the project, um, and it kind of shows um, so how the industry is currently working on um, yeah, making fault management um, say even better, and that's trying to work with those upstream projects. So there's the link to the project site uh, for you there. And do you want to pick that up? Sure. So that's this. That's what we wanted to to talk to you about today. Um, first and foremost. The, the telecom world, the telecommunications service providers are reinventing their networks and moving all of this infrastructure from function-specific hardware, um, proprietary hardware, functions that are trapped in hardware in expensive and, and difficult to, to roll out ways, to an open source infrastructure. And um, w we believe that we can use these components to build the right level of performance and availability needed to address the, the market segment. Also important, despite being at the OpenStack Summit, this NFE platform is, again, more than just OpenStack. It's a, it's a broad set of projects, and we're really looking to impact the entire stack so that we build this, this combination into uh, a, a service provider capable infrastructure so that the service providers can bring the same web scale and web agility to their data centers that we're seeing in, in the uh, you know, modern web scale applications uh, in the internet. And then, as I mentioned earlier, it's really important both from a Red Hat and NEC perspective, and, and we believe in general for the industry, to focus on upstream. All the development that we do is, is pushed directly upstream. All the conversations that we have, we try to engage in the community rather than doing it uh, behind the scenes and creating solutions that are either locked into a particular vendor's um, platform or, or sort of bolted on to the side in a way that when it gets to the community, it's really not an acceptable solution. So upstream first is a critical part of, of the development process here. Um, in OpenStack, we have a telco working group. So for those of you who are here who are interested in NFE and, and telco features and are not in the telco working group, uh, uh, who is that, by the way? You're all part of it. Mm -hmm. I don't believe you because I don't see. I don't recognize all the faces. Um, please come to that, that working group as a way to organize our efforts. And what we're doing in OPNFE is directly related to this. So in OPNFE, uh, what I like to say is if if the OPNFE community and the OpenStack Telco working group community aren't the same people, we're fundamentally doing something wrong. So our goal is not to have this external group, OPNFE, to do stuff off by itself, but it's to be really a part of each of the respective communities that are important. Uh, so we're kind of blur, uh, blurring the lines and merging together with this working group. And ultimately, as we gain uh, sort of awareness in the community and credibility in the community, we don't necessarily need a focused working group. We just have people that are part of the, of the broader community. Um, and then you know, OPNFE is there to help take that uh, industry-defined reference architecture, turn that into a, an open source built reference implementation, and OpenStack and, and the relevant projects that we talked about today are really critical to that. So thank you for your time. And we're really excited about this part. Questions? Yes. I think you have to use the mic because we are being recorded. Sorry. Uh, so you talked about this hardware fault detection and notification to the guest. Mm -hmm. uh, shouldn't the guest normally not make any assumption about whether the underlying server has that capability or some other server may not have it, and just do some application level keep alives 
so that it runs regardless of the server has some acceleration or not. I mean, shouldn't that reside? A good VNF should do its own fault detection. Do you, any comments? Well, first of all, my point of view, totally agree. So, and, and what Dirk was saying is there are applications right now that are trying to run on these platforms that don't have that capability built in. So there is a mechanism and, and a method for injecting faults into those guests where they're, they were running on bare metal. They're used to being able to detect faults locally um, and you know, sort of preserving that kind of behavior. But long term, the right solution is faults can happen. You build your applications in a cloud-aware way, so you're prepared to deal with faults at the application level. Absolutely. And they're, one of the great things about um, the NFE sort of transformation of the network is it's creating opportunities for new people to come in and, de and build new services for the telcos um, that are from the beginning designed in that fault aware kind of cloud application uh, style. So absolutely. Right. So I mean, what we are seeing is there is of, there's of course existing investments. That's one thing. I mean, it's also mindsets that need to change. So how to develop uh, VNS uh, in a, like, a cloud-ready way. And this is happening verily. Until it has fully happened, um, there's still uh, demand for, for, the, for this other way. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you had a, on your slides, you had a couple of uh, projects and innovations that had to do with, you know, tuning the performance of compute, like CPU pinning and such. Right. Um, I, I didn't see anything that had to do with improving the performance of the actual network, like, you know, positionally where the compute nodes are, are in a network or how to increase the performance of the network. So my question is that of any, you know, has, is there any work being done there or is that of any importance to OP NFV or is it low? Uh, do you know of any projects that are trying from within OPNFV working group that are looking at that? Right. So OPNFV um, has a it's like data plane performance uh, project. Um, so that is um, basically looking in, in, into, um, say, compute infrastructure uh, performance improvements. Um, so what, where I see this be, um, become important is um, if you look into like um, service chaining, where I mean, today we are trying, trying to figure out how to implement service chaining at all, so how to do encapsulation right and how to attach metadata. But I think in the future it will also be important to do this efficiently, so like to um, like, uh, um, avoid having too many hops uh, like in inconvenient locations and so on, so co-locate uh, functions and so on. So OPNFE has, um, uh, a pro has two projects on, on, on service chaining, and um, so it's possible that um, so these aspects uh, would be addressed there. We also have two projects on the data plane acceleration. Well, then, right, yeah, right. One <laughs> is really um, kind of broadly, how do you do performance measuring of a, of a forwarding device? And then one more specific to essentially the integration of DPDK and OVS. So that's host level packet acceleration. And then work that we've done together, and you see in Red Hat, um, to enable, first you want to do quick pr uh, packet processing on the host, and then you need to deliver it efficiently to the guest. And the traditional I.O. stack that uh, delivers packets through for KVM is Vert I.O. Uh, there's been uh, a specific project using a shared memory between the host and, and the guest, and presenting that shared memory to the guest as a network interface card, and then a specific DPDK pull mode driver to pull packets out of that shared memory segment. So from the um, host NIC, you have something that's essentially allowing you to DMA almost directly into the guest, not quite, but almost. So there's absolutely a lot of focus on that. But the CPU pinning, the IO awareness, the NUMA awareness, that's actually part of packet processing acceleration because you can't efficiently do, uh, uh, you know, some of this is CPU bound work, and you can't do that efficiently if you're not um, well uh, confined to a, a NUMA node. So they're all kind of complementary. <laughs> We're being thrown out. <laughs> Thanks for the questions. If you have more questions, yeah. just come up here.